What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, back with some more Cocteau Twins. And as requested from a number of people, and with the help of Han Solo, we're going to go back for the Spangle Maker EP, 1984. Luca is, like, seriously freaked out right now. She heard something outside, I think, and she just keeps walking around chirping like a bird. In any case, um, yeah, ultimately, uh, this is before uh, the album uh, that we just got to, which is Treasure. Once again, shout out to Doug for sending the CD, as well as Han Solo for making um, the folder available. In any case, um, the Spangle Maker EP starts with the title track. Um, as far as I know, spangles are like those metallic like discs that um, adorn clothing, and I think... Um, while they remain mostly decorative, I suppose they could serve as plating for, you know, sort of armored clothing. Regardless, um, yeah, that's my understanding of a spangle, which, you know, in the United States, the anthem, the, the Star Spangled Banner, I feel like, um, the idea of a, something shining with, you know, the individual platelets, or in that case, like stars, um is essentially the essence of Spangle. So the Spangle maker, um, a machine or a person, perhaps better, who makes Spangles and, um, again, knowing that their lyrics are not always a story in the conventional sense or, um, you know, clear, unambiguous um, themes, uh, but often as a sort of reference point or a, um, you know, rhythmic, verbal um, component to a larger, larger sonic um, feast, I won't spend much more time thinking about it, but again, that is, I think, the essence of Spangle. So the Spangle Maker, um, it makes me wonder if we're talking a person or the actual machine that churns out the, the little disc that can be adorned to things. So I'll stop talking. We'll just listen to the tune as Luca suddenly is seeming a little more comfortable, which I'm happy about. This is Cocteau Twins. The track is The Spangle Maker from the EP of the same name, 1984. Or rather, it would be, except someone forgot to do that.
music, she single-handedly changes the tone of the tune. experience after hearing this tune like man I'm glad we went back for this like I seriously don't want to skip any track and it's funny because I know according to the band themselves there are releases that they you know view um, more skeptically these days even if fans are like oh it's amazing so um, and I get that you know like as someone who looks at writing you know that I did 10 11 or even something like three or four years ago it's like oh I do that you know I do that so differently if I were to do it now so I get it, like over time, personal opinions about things you've done uh, can evolve. Um, but it's like every song this group makes, whether it's a bit lighter, whether it's a bit darker, and this one was on the darker end, again, maybe not exactly like Garland's, but certainly having this haunted feel to it, one or two of the layers in particular that kept filtering through like this cold death wind or something. But um, all the while the tune sort of propelling itself in this sort of dark chugging way and then her voice which I caught bits and pieces it felt like and even those I'm not sure about um, but ultimately um, again the atmosphere created which you know, I mentioned that when she did those vocal escalations both volume and tone wise it was like you know because I think it happened on a couple occasions it, she like single-handedly with her voice changed the feeling and atmosphere of the tune um, so I love those moments as well um, and yeah, just a very brooding tune, even if not quite as heavy, not as percussive as some of the other tracks that we've gone through um, during this general like early to mid 80s phase. Um, but one which, again, unmistakably, like, I suppose it's not hard. It's like saying like, oh, well, I can recognize a tune by Japan or something. It's like, yeah, because they don't really sound like anybody else. I'd say it's the same with Cocteau Twins. It's like, again, if I heard this... Um, without someone telling me what it was, I'm fairly confident that within a very short amount of time I could figure out that it's Cocteau Twins. Um, but at the same time, it's like, that's not, like, I feel like that's not a great statement about my own, like, powers of sonic perception in the sense that I say, yeah, because that, you know, that's Cocteau Twins. Like, they really don't sound like anyone else. So, um, yeah, bottom line, um, I am very much happy that we can go very much happy not at my own speaking or uh, semantic skills, but at the opportunity to go through the Spangle Maker EP. I noticed um, on like the original version of the EP, there's three tracks, but in this folder provided by Han Solo, there is also a 12 inch mix of this title track. So we'll go through that as well, and then we will get back to Treasure. Um, so yeah, big shout out to all the people who are here for the Cockroach Twins Deep Dive and shout out to Han Solo for enabling it, and shout out to those who were saying, you know, you don't want to miss anything, even a single EP, which the more we go through the material, the more I do get that. So 
In any case, from a now calm, sleepy, and very placid-faced uh, Luca and I, um, do let me know what you think of this, and we will see you next time. Peace. And she bites my hand. Well, hey, look, I understand I upset your apple cart, but, you know, these things have to happen.